الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبح لله ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أمين يا رب العالمين السلام عليكم everyone uh, today إن شاء الله تعالى we're going to try and get to know سورة الصف a beautiful surah of the Qur'an, a very concise surah of the Qur'an, and yet a very powerful surah of the Qur'an. It belongs to the group that I previously mentioned. When I was talking about Surah Al-Hadid, it's from the Musabbihat. And this is a Madani surah. This was revealed after the Prophet migrated to Medina. And it's uh, part of the group of surahs where the Muslims are being reprimanded, in some sense, for not showing the kind of strength of faith that is expected of them. And in all of these surahs, you'll find a recurring theme, and I want to talk about that theme today. And that is that Allah will compare the submission of the skies and the earth, everything in the heavens and the earth, continuously declares Allah's perfection and always has. That's the first ayah of the surah. سَبَّحَ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Everything in the skies and the earth is in absolute submission before Allah. And then He'll contrast that with the best of all creation, human beings. If you're the best of all creation, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ We created the human being in the best of all forms and the best of all most upright of forms. If that's the case of the human being, then the best example of submission and servitude and loyalty to Allah should be human beings. But contrary, and within human beings, it should be believers, right? So we're the cream of the crop as far as creation is concerned from Allah's perspective, from a faith perspective. And yet Allah mentions that contrast and says, Ya أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لِمَا تَقُولُونَ مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ Believers, why do you say what you don't do? Why do you declare God's perfection, but it doesn't reflect in your character, it doesn't reflect in your speech, it doesn't reflect in your behavior, in your lifestyles? So that contrast is continuously made in all of these musabbihat between the submission of all existence compared to the submission and in contrast with the submission of human beings and particularly the believing community. That's one really salient feature of this surah. The second thing about this surah that I'd like you to note is that this surah is actually inciting believers to stand up when the Prophet ﷺ is in a state of emergency calling them to basically risk their lives. This is in the middle of now, we're in the heat of conflict with the Meccans and now we are basically in a state of war. Now Muslims have gone to war with the Meccans and they've brought the war to, to Medinans, to the Muslims several times now and in the heat of all of that there are some who are saying we didn't sign up to be part of an army, we just signed up to become faithful and believers. You know, the 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 great test of a lot of believers alongside prophets in the past, especially the prophets of the Israelites. وَكَأَيِّ مِن نَبِيٍ قَاتَلَ مَعَهُ رَبِّيُّنَا كَثِيرٍ How many prophets have there been that the peop godly people have fought alongside them because they were supposed to not just you know, accept the call of the, of, the, of the messenger, but also fight alongside him if the need came for it. So that's the call being made to the Muslim community. Now, now you need to put you know, money and, and children uh, you know, and think about money and children aside and give up your lives for the sake of Allah when the call comes, when the call for Uhud comes, when the call for Badr before that comes, or when the call for Ahzab is going to come. It's basically now a fight for the survival of Islam itself in this small city of Medina. So that's the kind of overall picture of the surah. Allah will call Muslims and say, call upon Muslims and say, by the way, don't fall down the road of the followers, some of the disappointing followers of Musa, Moses, and the disappointing, some of the those who disbelieved in Jesus, even though they were supposed to believe in him, don't follow down, don't go down that path. And whether you do or not, Allah's plan is to give this Islam victory. So if you think you're not going to join the battlefield, and you're not going to come alongside the Prophet, إِلَّا تَنْصُرُوهُ فَقَدْ نَصَرَهُ اللَّهِ If you don't aid him, Allah has already aided him, like he mentions in Surah At-Tawbah. Here he basically mentions Allah's grand plan. He mentions in the, in the heart of this surah, يُرِيدُونَ لِيُطْفِئُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ وَاللَّهُ مُتِمُّ نُورِهِ They want to extinguish the light of Allah with their mouths, with their propaganda, with the things that they say. Allah is the one to complete His light. وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْكَافِرُونَ No matter how much disbelievers hate it. هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَى وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ لِيُظْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ He's the one, meaning Allah is the one who sent His Messenger with guidance and the religion of truth, the, 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 the way of delivering justice to all people and to give them their rights so that it may manifest over all other religion. In other words, Allah is saying that the entire region is going to be, be taken over, shirk is going to be destroyed, and Allah's plan of cleansing the house of Allah, of the house built by Ibrahim alayhi salam, the Kaaba, and as a result, Tawheed and the, the oneness of Allah being established in the entire region is bound to happen. 
That is the goal that Allah Azza wa Jal has, has laid down. وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْمُشْرِكُونَ Even if the mushrik, the idol worshippers that don't want that to happen, no matter how much they hate for that to happen, that idol worship will be destroyed in this region. That is Allah's plan, whether you join, join in or not. So your motivation to join should not be victory because Allah has already given that up. Like that's His responsibility. So what motivation does the, the ummah have? What motivation does the believer have to join in and really be ready to sacrifice alongside the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu hal adullukum ala tijara tunjikum min adha bin alim. Believers, should I tell you of a sale, a, a, you know, a business transaction that will rescue you from painful punishment? And then he describes, if you, you, you're going to believe in Allah and His Messenger, You're going to be struggling in the path of Allah, even fighting alongside the Messenger in the path of Allah. Jihad actually doesn't mean fighting, it means to struggle. But if that struggle necessitates fighting alongside the Messenger, then you will do so. You know, with your monies and your, yourselves. And if you were to do so, not only will He rescue you from painful punishment, يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَيُدْخِلْكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ He'll in turn forgive all of your sins and enter you into gardens at the bottoms of which rivers are flowing. What success, what victory are you looking for in this world? That's the victory you should be concerned with. That's the victory that I'm offering you. That is your motivation to stay loyal to this messenger no matter what he asks you to do. And that's why he says in the surah, وَأُخْرَى تُحِبُّونَهَا نَصْرٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ and secondarily of the things you love is Allah's aid is coming. Wafathun qareeb and a nearby victory. Worldly victory, fine. You can be obsessed with it, you can like it, but always remember that is a far second as far as Allah is concerned. Ukhra tuhibbuna. And it's not like Allah loves it for you. Rather, the language is so beautiful. Tuhibbunaha. You love it. You're the ones who love it. Fine, I'll throw that in too. You might even get victory in this life. Wabashir al mu'minin. Congratulate the true believers. Congratulate pe people who believe whether victory comes or not. By the end of the surah, we are actually compared to the disciples of Isa, which is a powerful, powerful parable. We all know that the, the followers, the true followers of Jesus were actually dispersed. They didn't get victory. And they weren't, they weren't empowered in the land. They were actually distributed all over the, you know, in different parts. And they were in exile. And, you know, his message got corrupted so much sooner, you know, soon, soon after. But those who truly followed him as a messenger and were holding on to Islam were actually the persecuted. And yet Allah describes by the end of that parallel, Kunu ansar Allah, be aids of Allah. كَمَا قَالَ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمْ لِلْحَوَارِيِّينَ مَنْ أَنصَارِي إِلَى اللَّهِ Like Isa, the son of Maryam, said, Jesus, the son of Mary, said, to the disciples, the Hawariyin, what he said to them, who is going to be my aid leading to God? You know, so they can be my aid, so they can make their way all the way to Allah. The, the disciples said, نَحْنُ أَنصَارُ اللَّهِ We're going to be the aids of Allah. And by the end of that ayah, Allah says, فَأَصْبَحُوا ظَاهِرِينَ you know, he says, a group of the Israelites believed, a group of the Israelites disbelieved. فَآمَنَ الطَّائِفَةُ مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ وَكَفَرَ الطَّائِفَةُ فَأَيَّدْنَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا عَلَىٰ عَدُوِهِمْ We aided those who believed among the Israelites against their enemies and they became dominant. Now, but we know historically they didn't become dominant. ظاهرين but Allah is saying, you're not understanding what dominance means. Dominance is وَالَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ فَوْقَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Those who truly have taqwa will have the upper hand on the day of resurrection. They are victorious as far as Allah is concerned. You need to rethink what victory means. You need to rethink it. And that's why this parallel is so powerful and so beautiful. One thing I want to share with you before I conclude about this beautiful surah in terms of its unique style is that Allah has mentioned virtually everything, every lesson that He taught in this surah, He taught it in pairs. It's really cool. Uh, and it's just a, such a consistent part of the style of the surah. So you, I'll, I'll share some of that with you. In the beginning, he paired the skies and the earth that declare Allah's perfection. سَبَّحَ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمِ Then he paired the skies and the earth with us. So he paired, like, they do what they're supposed to, the skies and the earth do. Why don't you do what you're supposed to? يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لِمَا تَقُولُونَ مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ Believers, why don't you do what you say? You know, why, why don't you do what you say? Right? But then, or why, why, why do you say what you don't do rather? Now, when he talks about the believers and says, why do you say what you don't do? He mentions that twice. Once he says, why do you do it? And then secondly, he says, how disgusting it is repeating the phrase, that you say what you don't do. So that's paired again, saying what we don't do. Then he paired Musa and Isa. إِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ وَإِذْ قَالَ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمِ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ When, Isa, when Mo Moses spoke to his people, when Jesus spoke to his people. And their responses have been paired. Then you go further, you'll find uh, Allah says, 
says, يُرِدُونَ لِيُطْفِئُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ وَاللَّهُ مُتِمُّ نُورِهِ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْمُشْرِكُونَ They want to blow out the light, you know, the light of Allah with their mouths and Allah is going to complete His light even if the, the, the وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْكَافِرُونَ Even if the disbelievers hate it. So Allah mentions, doesn't matter how much the disbelievers hate it and He pairs it in the next ayah with doesn't matter how much the mushrikun hate it, the idol worshippers hate it. So he just he paired both of those together. Then he mentions Subhanahu wa Taala on the one hand their scheme they're going to try to do what they're going to do. Allah will do what He does. He'll complete His light, and then He'll pair that with. Well, why do you think He sent His messenger? Liyulhirahu ala dini kullihi. Going along, Subhanallah. When He says, "Why should you? Why should you be loyal to the messenger? What's the cause that you should be loyal to the messenger for?" He even broke that up into two. One, it will save you from painful punishment. Two, it will give you forgiveness in heaven. So he paired it, you know, one is a kind of a negative reinforcement. You don't want to get in trouble. And that's why you want to be loyal to the messenger. And two, you want to earn great rewards from Allah. And that's why you want to be loyal to the messenger. Even what you must do is paired. تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ You will believe in Allah and His messenger and you're going to struggle greatly in the path of Allah with your monies and yourselves. Faith and struggle, they've been paired together. And finally, my favorite you know, pairing in the surah is actually at the end, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُونُوا أَنصَارَ اللَّهِ كَمَا قَالَ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمِ يَا بَنِي عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمِ مَنْ أَنصَارِ إِلَى اللَّهِ Those of you who believe, be aids of Allah, just as Jesus said, to, to the disciples, who is going to be my aid leading to Allah. So we have been paired with the followers of Isa alayhi salam. For me personally, this is going to be an exhaustive study, um, inshallah ta'ala, hopefully sometime this year, uh, because when Allah compares us to the original followers of Isa alayhi salam, it becomes incumbent upon me as a student of the Qur'an to exhaustively study the early history of Isa alayhi salam from whatever sources, authentic sources we can find, uh, to be able to understand this parallel in as much depth as possible because it has certainly now become a part of the Qur'an. Those people have been, you know, been made heroes by the Qur'an itself and their accomplishments have been glorified by the, the ending words of the surah. You know, so may Allah Azza wa Jal help us once again appreciate the beauty and the power and the connections in the Quran. I will remind you of something. One last thing, um, Allah says, "Walaqad ataynaka sabam min al mathani." Uh, in the description of the Fatiha in Surah Al-Hijr, Allah mentions that the, the, the Fatiha is seven from out of the paired things. Mathani means that which are highly praised, but it also means that which is paired. And part of the style of the Quran is many things are mentioned in pairs, yeah, because the word Mathani comes from Mithna. Uh, which is actually similar to the Hebrew word Mishnah. And the, 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 the Jewish tradition of the Mishnah is actually, they, they use the word Mishnah for repeated study or review. And Mithnah in Arabic is that which is repeated over and over again. So it's a parallel even from the Hebrew term. Uh, but the, the, the idea that the Quran has Mithnah in it, has Mathani in it, actually suggests that things are paired with each other so you can compare them to one another and b better understand each one of them, you know? So sometimes things are opposites, and by opposites things are known. تُعْرَفُ الْأَشْيَاءُ بِأَضْدَادِهَا By opposites things are known, you know. Or sometimes things are paralleled with each other, and by that parallel, each of the unique qualities of the other side is highlighted. May Allah Azza wa increase our understanding and our sincerity to His book. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.